Hello, and in this video, I want to show you how we can use the fork in our viewport of Houdini. So here I have my scene with terrain and geometry, and I would like to have a fork in my scene. So first of all, make sure we are using here our high light setting. And in here, let's right click, and at the bottom here, we will find an option to enable the fog. And then immediately you can see that we have some fog going on. Now the other way is in our viewport, we can press our D key and this will open display options. So these contain all options for our display settings, but of course we are interested here in our fog tab. So we have a big toggle to turn this on or off here as well. Then first of all, we have a color, so we can get different colors. So for the moment, let's give this a very clear color, like maybe this blue. So it's very visible what we're doing. Then we have our density and opacity. So with the density, I can increase how much this effect is going to happening. And let's also zoom out a bit more, where we can press spacebar G. My scene is gone, and that's actually because of my fog. If I would lower my fog, I would see I have a very intense fog scanning right now. So this is quite cool. We can also then lower the opacity. So you might have a high density and then turn it a bit down with the opacity. So you can play around with these sliders to make it subtle. Then here is the depth range. So this is with the range of the fog. So let's say we want to have it starting from, for example, 100 units. Then you will see that at this point it won't start, but when we go over the 100 units, it will start adding the fog. So this can be useful to, for example, up close, don't have that much fog, but farther away, have more fog going on. Here is a better example. So I have 50 in range. So the foreground here doesn't contain that much fog. And if I would, for example, put this to zero, you have fog all the way. So this can help localizing where the fog should start. Then also interesting here is our height. So right now it's set to below. So the fog comes from below. We also have, for example, above, and you will see here in my sky that it will start from there. And we can also have no limit, so it will do sort of both of them. Then also interesting here is we have these values to control it. Let's put this to below. And I want my fog to be happening here at the bottom here of my scene. So it's like a very foggy canyon there. So I want to lower this. So the fog is quite high now. So let's put this to maybe 20. So it's very low. And we can also lower the fall off maybe to five and increase these values more. Something cool we can do is we can actually go over this value of 10. So maybe let's go for 30. And now I have that fog value. I also have here the depth range still to 50. So maybe this to 10 as well maybe even lower like this. And now we have this cool localized fork here in my scene. I can just play around with these values to have that, to have something like this. And then the last options here are the sun. So for that, I'm going to reset some of these settings here back again. So for the sun, you can see this orange color here. So this is where my sun is. If I would enable or disable this, you can see that. And the main reason why this is happening is of a light. So here in my scene, I have a light. This is set to the type distance. So if I would move my light now, we also will move this effect here. So we will move that fog. So playing around now with this intensity, we can then control how much of this orange blends in with our blue color. And I can also increase here the intensity. So this is, of course, too much. But you can see that this can have a clear influence on our terrain. Like maybe this is a sun in the horizon or something like that. So we can do something like this. So of course, this might be too extreme, but it gives you a clear example of how this is working. So that was it for this video. We can now have fog real time in our viewport to make our scenes much more cooler.